hey, thanks for clicking on my video. Today, I'm hopefully going to answer your questions about parents and guardians inside of Google Classroom. And for parents, I'm going to try to answer the question about grading reports and how do you get them through Google Classroom? What do you actually see? What are your choices for frequency of getting these reports? And then also, if you don't want them anymore, how do you unsubscribe? On the teacher side of things, we're going to answer the questions like, how do we register our parents? And does every teacher have to register every single parent for every single class? So I'm going to start by going into one of my classes. And this is one that I set up as just kind of a dummy account. And I have my actual kids as part of this classroom. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first go to people. And you can see that I'm the teacher and my two children are the students. And you can see here, it's going to say invite guardians. And so what I'm going to do as the teacher is I'm going to click on where it says invite guardians. And I'm going to type in the email for the guardian that I want to invite. Once I have it, I'm going to click on that pink area there that says invite. And now you can see that that email address has been invited. So now I'm going to switch over to the parent side of it. And let's see what I see when I'm invited to a classroom as a parent. So here's the email that I received in my Gmail account. And I can see that it's for my student, my son Mason. And it gives the teacher's name that has invited you as a guardian in their Google Classroom. And it says you'll get a weekly summary of Mason's progress with missing and upcoming work and new teacher posts. So I'm going to right now accept this, or I could say that I'm not the guardian. So I'm going to click on accept. And now this brings us to a screen that tells us a little bit more if we're a parent that is new to this. Google Classroom email summaries. Email summaries are sent to this email address. We could also learn more. I'm going to click on that in a second, but below is frequency. And I always talk about frequency, and you have a couple of options. You can get email updates daily. You could get them weekly, which is kind of the default that they have. Or you can just say no summaries at all. And then you can pick your time zone. And since we're in the Eastern time zone, I'm going to leave that. So once that's set up, I don't really need to do anything. I can just leave it. But if I was going to change it to daily, it looks like that would just take effect. I'm going to leave it as weekly, but I am going to click on learn more up here at the top. And so what this is going to tell you is that in the email summaries, you're going to be able to see your students missing work, the upcoming work, and also class activities, announcements, assignments, questions that were recently posted by teachers. It also then tells you before you begin, you can get these emails sent to any email address. So if you don't like the one that the teacher gave you, maybe it's one they found within the gradebook system that you use, you can always email the teacher and ask to be invited to a different email address. And then finally, it tells you that you have about 120 days as the parent to accept an invitation before it expires. So now when you go into the management of the summaries that you're going to be receiving, you can see that you can update your email summaries. So in the settings piece in the email that you receive for your students, you can click on settings. And then if you haven't already, you sign into your Google account. Under frequency, you can change the frequency, as I just said, weekly, daily, or no summaries, and also change that time zone. If you're looking to unsubscribe from these summaries, there is an unsubscribe button that comes up, and then you're going to be able to remove yourself as the guardian if you don't want to receive them anymore. So going back to the teacher screen now, you can see that it went from invited to my actual name as the parent. And so that tells the teacher that this parent has accepted the invitation and is now seeing the summaries of this student. What's great with the teacher is that if you needed to, you could email the student like you always could, but now you can also email the guardian directly. You can also invite more guardians if you need to, or if a guardian didn't know how to remove themselves, 
you as the teacher could receive an email or a phone call from that parent and you could remove them from getting any more notifications for the parent. Parents, you're probably asking, what is this going to look like when it comes to my email inbox? Well, as I show you that, at the same time, I'm going to tell you, teachers, you're probably asking the question or have asked the question, do I have to do this and every teacher have to do this for every single student in your Google Classroom? The great part is no. If you're on a team of teachers, the science teacher that teaches the same child as maybe myself, they won't have to put in the guardian's email address if I've already invited a guardian or a parent. That's the best part. You can kind of designate and maybe chunk it with different team members that you have in your school and then invite those parents and kind of split the work. Sometimes one teacher will just do every student and that way the other teachers don't have to worry about it at all. Once a student accepts the invitation, they are accepting it for every Google Classroom that their student is in. So let's go back to what does this look like at the parent end. Here's an example on Google Classroom's help website. And what you can see is that it's going from week to week. So missing from last week, this is the student work that is missing. You can see US history has an assignment, English has an assignment, and it's past the due dates because they're in red. It also has things that are upcoming that are going to be due next week. US history and then marine biology. So you can see that there's different courses as we talked about. You can also see class activity from past weeks. So from this past week, you can see that there was an assignment here, the price of free speech, a question, and also birth of a nation. That all goes under US history. Also American literature in what they did, a couple assignments there, as well as marine biology. And at the bottom, you can see right here at the bottom of these emails that you as the guardians or parents receive, this is where your settings button is and your unsubscribe button is. So I hope this helps all the parents and guardians out there stay on top of your student just a little bit more, as well as keep the doors of communication open between yourself as a parent to the teachers and also your student. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.